Welcome back. I'm very excited to introduce our next guest. Diana Wentworth has lived a life in the public eye, in her private space. She has lived a deeply beautiful, productive life and really all very heart-based in love. So I couldn't imagine a more perfect guest for our month of love show as we're keeping it right now. And Diana is here to offer us some elder wisdom of a life well lived. I'm going to let her tell you about how that all came to be. So let me welcome Diana Wentworth. Thank you for being on Good Day with us. Oh, I'm so happy to be here with you, Lauren. I'm very happy to have you. And I know you may very well know many of our viewers. They may know you. You've traveled in similar circles for many, many years. But tell us a little bit about what brought you to today. When I talk about a productive, beautiful, loving life, you know, the, the word charmed actually comes to life. And that doesn't mean there was no sadness or hardship. It just means that you moved through it from a very heart-centered space. And that's why I just fell in love with you and your story from the get-go. Oh, thank you. Well, my mother used to say I was living a charmed life. And I do think that that has been true, even though like everybody listening has had times of deep despair and loss. Um, I think my superpower has been to be able to raise my own spirits. And to live in a space of wonder and expecting magic. So Expect Magic is the name of my 11th book. I have just pared it down from 300 pages to about 35 pages because I just want to get give it away and get it out there. Amazing. Um, I have had a long career in cooking and entertaining, as you mentioned. That was for 15 years. I've had two incredible marriages. I've been widowed twice, most recently just about two and a half years ago. And my first marriage was 25 years. My second one was 31 years. And so I find myself on the threshold of a whole new life, really, uh, being 81 years old and um, Maybe I'm 82. I forget. <laughs> I'm not going to ask you for your driver's license. <laughs> I was license. born in 1941, so I guess that I'm 82. Uh, but anyway, um, I've had a career in the culinary world, as you mentioned, and also as the founder with my first late husband, Paul Von Wellnitz, of some of a foundation called the Inside Edge, which had weekly breakfast meetings in Orange County and San Diego and Los Angeles, um, where we featured speakers who were life enhancing speakers. And there were a lot of very famous people who had never written a book yet and who met there and went in, on to become household names. So that's people like Louise Hay and Jack Canfield and Mark Victor Hansen created their first chicken soup for the soul there. And I got to be the first co-author in that with the third book in the series called The Chicken Soup for the Soul Cookbook. So in a nutshell, uh, that's- Wait a minute, why, why would Chicken Soup for the Soul have a cookbook? Well, you know, everybody thought it was a cookbook in the beginning because of the title. And uh, their their publisher kept saying, we need a cookbook. And they, they kept saying, we can't do a cookbook. We don't know how to cook. <laughs> and then they suddenly remembered that I had six cookbooks. And I'd been recently widowed and remarried. And they called me and they said, uh, come on over to this hotel. We're nearby. You're going to write the chicken soup for this old cookbook. And I kept thinking, 101 chicken soup recipes? But then I realized how much connection happens around the table. You know, people are out traveling and they have adventures and their food is really very much a catalyst for connection. And so they only gave me three months to do it, but the first printing was 950,000 copies. And so that book was definitely my most successful book by far. What an amazing story. How did you get into the culinary world? Well, I had a grandmother who was an entrepreneur. Her husband was disabled and she started a boarding house and she would take great joy in, and she made the best fried chicken and boysenberry jam and 
biscuits, you know, I mean, I just, I loved being around her. I loved the feeling of how she loved to gather people together. And um, I had a bit of a rough childhood in that my father was manic depressive and sent me off to boarding school all by myself. And so loneliness was kind of my core wound. And I think I was always looking for ways to gather companions. Um, and that just grew and grew through my culinary career and into, you know, creating playgrounds for people to connect and share their um, authenticity with each other and have deep conversations. Well, and that's pretty much what you built with the Inside Edge, isn't it? Yes, it is. And it we just completed 38 years of, we took it online, of course, during COVID, uh, and then we reached a point where having a 501c3 was a lot of work. Yeah, yeah it is. <laughs> and uh, Zoom has so connected us, you know, in the world that we can now do it without having to have meetings in person. And I do a lot of my coaching and connecting online. So, and that's that's been the gift, I believe, the greatest gift of mm -hmm. COVID Definitely. was that it forced all of us. It, especially those of us who just never thought online was a thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, for me personally, it meant I no longer needed to ask people to drive the 405 to come to studio to be on the show. And that opened my prospective guest list to the world and everybody exactly. was thrilled to say yes, right? Exactly. I love that I don't have to travel. And I love the little thing on Zoom where you go under um, the video and you can push this little line and improve my appearance and it takes away all your wrinkles. <laughs> yes, they, they knew exactly what they were doing with that button. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, no doubt. So <laughs> very funny. I I remember when we first visited um, your story about how you met your second husband is is really something that I think everybody wishes for if they're mm -hmm. in the space of wanting to meet someone. Would you share that with us? Oh, I'd love to. I really would. It took me 10 years to write the book called Send Me Someone. Um, before my husband passed, he was my soulmate. We had done, we'd had so many beautiful years together. We just celebrated our 25th anniversary. And then the, a couple of days later, he was diagnosed with terminal cancer. So in the next four months, it was uh, a lot of getting used to that idea and so on. And then just a few days before he passed, he said, I don't want you to be alone. And you know how a frog sometimes jumps out of your mouth? I just said, send me someone. <laughs> and he said, I will. So two months later, uh, at the Orange County chapter of the Inside Edge, in walked a man named Ted Wentworth. And he was a widower. He had dated 131 women. <laughs> he was on a mission to find his new wife and somebody told him about the inside edge so the minute he walked in the door he had a sense that his new wife was in the room he said to his friend he said she's here my new wife is in this room and I was the host that day and um, I said something horrible actually it was <laughs> I was hosting the meeting and somebody said, how are you really getting along, Diana? And I said, I said, well, it's so interesting. I've, I've been married all my life, just about, and and I'm discovering what it is to be alone. I said, the first man that well, that um, proposes a live-in relationship could become the victim of, a, of an axe murder. <laughs> and I couldn't believe I'd said such a thing. It was not like me at all. But Ted Wentworth was in the room. And so he walked up to me during the intermission and he said, will you live with me? <laughs> <laughs> that was your live mic moment, right? That was, his, that was his opening line. And six months later, we were married. And we lived in Corona del Mar. And he was a very interesting man, much more like Robin Williams than my original husband. <laughs> um, quite a spontaneous character. But we had wonderful 31 years together. And uh, so it, I've had a lot of romance and a lot of a lot of uh, intimacy that I feel so grateful for. And a lot of real love. And it it translates. It translates to how you approach the world, how you approach life uh, with all the 
potential situations that could have <laughs> been uh, the whole notion that you that you would basically just tell your first husband to send me someone and and he would I mean it all makes so much sense when you tell the story I thought when I heard that for the first time that I'd never really heard the through line go go quite as smoothly through so first of all I know that's something that up it's an uplifting story just to hear it told by you Thank and you. I also know that it has informed those two relationships have informed your life that's and true. And I, I got to write the book. It took 10 years because I didn't know how to write, you know, a compelling story. I always pictured it as a film. And the film rights were optioned by um, not Amazon. What is it? Um, Lifetime. <laughs> Lifetime. <laughs> and uh, they didn't get it made in time. So I have the film rights back. But uh, it has a lot of pictures and you can buy a used copy on Amazon for like 89 cents or something. But it, it's quite a story. There's a lot of things that showed up with Ted that proved to me that he that Paul had indeed sent him. There were just some eerie events that uh, were just... He knew the man who knew too much. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Very funny. But today, so if I bring us fast forward to today, you are in a very different situation right now. Mm -hmm. And I know that you're in a situation that many of us either will go through or may very well be going through. I know I went through something similar at the time that COVID hit only because I was, I was leaving that life behind and moving on to something unknown, completely mm -hmm. unknown. Mm -hmm. And I feel like all of us come to that at some point. So tell us what's been going on with you because you've been very public about the process and I so appreciate that. <laughs> right. Well, you know, I, I've learned to trust my inner knowing. I, I do journaling and I ask a lot of what I call quantum questions that contain the energy of the result that I want. And I kept wondering what I would what I would be doing right now that would be forwarding, you know, that wouldn't be just being a slave to all my stuff in this condo that I'm now in in Palm Springs. And I decided uh, I have a partner and she and I run a what we call a wisdom circle, an encore wisdom circle. And I think of this as my these are my encore years. So how can I make these the most exciting? So I decided that I needed to get rid of 90% of my stuff and sell my condo and find out who I am now in the world. I've had so many wonderful connections with people that I could potentially visit. Um, I love to travel. I love to teach heart yoga, I call it. It's a combination of, of um, restorative yoga and bhakti yoga. I have a connection to a luxury spa where I might be able to teach that. And I just want to get out there and go on the road. Uh, the road to a road trip to surrender is what I call it. It sounds <laughs> a more title. Me, like a road trip to excitement, adventure, mm -hmm. or magic. Yes, a road trip into magic. So my condo's on the market. I have to be ready to flee with just a few moments notice, you know, and um, I'm going to do some really interesting things. Uh, and there's a book series that I've been a part of. I just um, finished my, in, my foreword to it called it's Women Gone Wild, and they're doing their third edition, which is all about intuition. And that's going to launch in New York in the first week of June. And all the people featured in it will be will have their pictures on Times Square. So that'll be a first for me. Oh, so I know where you'll be. Yes. <laughs> if I want to see you up close and personal, I just need to get to New York for the first week of June, which is my birthday week. So why oh, not? Oh, good. Oh, good. You're a Gemini, are you? I am. Yes, I my am. best friend uh, growing up was a Gemini. And uh, we had just a wonderful connection. But I'll take a picture and make sure you don't have to be there, Lauren. <laughs> Well, you know, I lived I lived in Manhattan for 27 years, so I don't oh. really need an excuse to go back. Oh, okay. I really, I really do love it there. And in the meantime, though, the fact that you will have your face on the billboard in in New York in uh, Times Square, amazing! And amazing. how much fun is that? How much fun is that along with the other women in the book? Right. So, 
this these encore projects you you basically when you said you asked these quantum questions would one of those questions be like what does your heart want to do as a legacy because I feel like that's what you're after right now that's a good question and I like to pack it with emotion so let me kind of give an example every morning I think everybody in the world wakes up and they think oh what do I have to do today you know I mean it's kind of like this parade of terribles that we're expecting and it, if we if we spend a lot of time in that it we spiral down with our energy so I do what I call morning magic. And I the first thing I do is smile uh, because that sends the endorphins into, the, into our system. And you can actually feel that begin to happen. I use an app called Nucalm, N-U-C-A-L-M, that is a brainwave uh, app. So I always listen to that. And then I start at, I start framing questions that make me feel good. So it might be something like, where's the most joy to be found today? Or how can I most lovingly and joyfully light this world today? Or what kind of magic can show up and amaze me today? And I find when I, that something happens in my system that I feel really magnetizes uh, a lot of good energy that just starts flowing in. And I'm always amazed at the end of the day of how much joy and amazement I've found. That if if someone is looking for a new way to start their day, and I know I do every couple months, you know, I'll try something new or just a new app, like that new calm app that you recommended. I don't think I know that one. There are there are so many ways for us to re-influence ourselves, refresh ourselves. And in the spirit of as I'm looking at all the hearts floating around behind me, <laughs> show ourselves a little more love in mm -hmm. whatever scenario we're in that that's that's to me the essence of valentines is yes. bring the love wherever you are and wherever it needs to be and wherever it feels good to you because that's when you will do the most magic so diana tell me how people can find you. And I know you have things on your website that people can access right now. Mm -hmm. So share a little bit about that. We have a few minutes left. Okay, I'd love to. Uh, my website is dianawentworth.com. And if you explore through there, you'll find years of blogs that I've, I've uh, written. There'll be all my books and so on. And the front page has even a video of me talking about my new favorite subject, which is beauty. I feel that beauty is our birthright. We're born into it. It's, a, it's an energy that uplifts us. And it includes not just physical beauty, of course, but beauty of, of behavior and uh, nature and memorizing poetry that uplifts you and so on. So uh, I do coaching. I do one-on-one -on -one coaching that I love to do with people. Uh, and we can have a 15 minute uh, discovery call. There's a calendar there to make an appointment. Um, then I we also offer wisdom circles, which is wisdom circles.com. And uh, we, we did a nine month program two years in a row. So it's the feminine uh, creation cycle of having creating an encore that excites you and, and makes you come alive. And I do writing coaching too. I give writing classes. So it's you, more fun than I can online stand. Online cooking, because I know your blog is called Divine Fudge and it just makes me hungry. <laughs> well, you know, fudge was an accident. It's the it's the national candy, but somebody was making taffy and, and they messed up in some way and out came fudge. And then, you know, I mean, I, I like the fact that, that our mistakes, our accidents can turn into something magnificent. So yeah. Yes, they do. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And again, I think, I think fudge is, is more heartfelt than taffy anyway. So yes. <laughs> I think it's definitely a happy accident. Right. Diana, we're going to put all this information both on the screen and into our blog post so people can continue to find you. I know they're going to want to. There are so many parts of everything <laughs> that you've done that, that just 
again, enchant and charm. And I can't imagine anyone not wanting to get closer. So oh, thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much for coming to share with us. And I look forward to seeing you again. Thank you, Lauren. What a joy it's been. My pleasure. And we'll be right back.